Hello and welcome to my backgammon channel. Thanks for joining me today. In today's short lesson, we are going to look at the phenomenon called board blindness. Now, this is something we've been all unlucky enough to face over the board and kick ourselves afterwards. Now here, you can see an example of a match I viewed online and White has rolled a great number, 6-2, but unfortunately missed the hit. And then White actually went on to lose this game and then lose the match. Now, by not hitting, White has effectively given away 25% in match winning chances. So the hit here was crucial, but it was missed. Now, this is an example of board blindness, but what are the reasons why this happens? Now, the four main reasons are fatigue, board size, presumption, and speed. Now, fatigue does affect us all. Maybe we place several back-to-back -back matches or the matches are particularly long and taxing with lots of complicated decisions and we're just mentally exhausted or there's a lack of hydration. Now, board size also is a factor in board blindness because if the board is very large, we may have to physically exert ourselves more to stretch across to move checkers. And of course, we may also miss things on the larger canvas. Now, presumption is very important. Often we play what looks obvious and we do not stop to consider what the second best move might be. And finally, speed, playing too quickly, playing too fast and not using our clock time effectively can lead to big mistakes. Now I'm going to show you four positions for money games and then we can look at how board blindness works in effect. Now here's the first one. This is an opening reply. White to roll a 5-3. Now here of course the best move is to play 24 to 16 and send another one of Green's checkers back, put him back in the race. But here, it's very easy just to make the three point without thinking, and that would actually be a blunder. We're told to always make inner board points to strengthen our home board. But here, we need to just stop and scan the board and see that we can pick up that checker in the outfield. Position two, white to play 6-5. Now again, it seems right to make the running play. Again, the lover's leap, running, safety in a checker. But again, it's wrong. We are nine pips down in the race. So it's better instead to play 24 to 18, 13 to 8 for contact. But again, we get used to certain moves. We play them too quickly. We don't think through the alternatives. And this is how board blindness can create big errors in our game. Position three, white to play a 4-3. Now here, the correct move is to make the three point on Green's head and put him on the bar. One checker from the six and one checker from the seven. But of course, it seems so natural to hit and then make the splitting play to separate our back checkers and fight for the advanced anchor. But that is a big blunder. Here, it's much better to make the point. You need to slow down, you need to think. Do not always kind of stick to what you've heard and what you're told. Backgammon is infinitely complex. And here, it just shows you that the splitting play is wrong by a large margin and the pointing play is correct. And finally, position four, we have a double three to play. Now, of course, with doubles, we have a lot more options because we can effectively move four checkers. So here, we can easily miss things over the board. Now, with double three, of course, there are lots of nice options. We can make the four point, we can make the 10 point, we can make the 21 point, but also we can hit. And hitting is by far the best play, 24 to 15, and then moving another checker forwards. We must hit, we have a strong home board, we want to send a checker back and take advantage. 
So here, again, you need to slow down, start thinking. Making the two anchors does look really strong, but it's simply wrong. It's much better to make the hitting play. We're also down in the race, which just move us towards a more aggressive attacking play. So there we are. There's four examples of board blindness over the board. But what can we do to improve and to avoid ourselves making these mistakes? Now, firstly, use the 12 second delay on the clock. It's there for a reason. Don't play so quickly. Make sure you scan all four quadrants of the board before picking up your dice. Have a look to make sure you haven't missed something. Always consider your second best move. Is making the point correct? Is hitting correct? What is the second best option? And then you can evaluate the two and then make the right choice after further thought. And finally, anticipate moves when your opponent is on a roll. So work out in advance what numbers are good for you, what numbers make points, what numbers will hit. And then you have pre-thought before your go and are more likely to be guided in the right direction. So there we are, board blindness. It happens to us all. It's happened to me and it can happen to you, but you can prevent it or certainly minimise the errors you're making. So follow these tips and I hope it works out for you. Like and subscribe if you enjoy my channel. New videos each Wednesday. All the best. Thank you very much.